The Dark Side of Hong Kong, What They Don't Tell You Hong Kong is often regarded as one of the best travel destinations in the world. Despite its glittering skyline and outsized economic performance, Hong Kong has a dark underbelly that only those who have lived here can comprehend. The city is a fascinating blend of influences that bridges the Occidental with the Oriental. However, it has its dark realities, which they obviously didn't want the world to know. An accurate generalization about Hong Kong is that entire families sleep on a single bed. Many people today do live in apartments that are no bigger than a mosquito's. Property values have been rising and that trend shows little sign of abating. Over 7 million people make their homes in Hong Kong, making it one of the world's densest cities despite its relatively small size of approximately 2,700 square kilometers. Only 7% of the land is actually being used for homes. As long as there remains a persistent gap between supply and demand for housing, we may expect annual price increases that are hard to fathom. There is also the Hong Kong government's land bidding strategy to consider. Hong Kong's open bidding system for selling land means that only the largest real estate companies can compete, driving up property prices steadily over the years. Developers from mainland China have entered the race in recent years, hoping to cash in on the soaring profits, driving up real estate prices to new all-time highs every few months. For instance, one residential plot in Kowloon fetched a record-breaking 28,531 Hong Kong dollars, or about 3,635 US dollars per square foot in January, making it the most expensive piece of real estate ever sold in the city. Many Hong Kong residents feel they have no choice but to live in nano flats since their incomes have not kept pace with the soaring cost of real estate. Coffin apartments or subdivided flats have become popular. Even though they are only 24 square feet in size, apartments in popular areas of Hong Kong like Kowloon and Hong Kong Island can cost as much as 3,000 Hong Kong dollars per month. How about low income and public housing? The Hong Kong government always tries to increase the supply of affordable housing, yet more is needed. There are more than 2 million public housing residents in Hong Kong. However, the Hong Kong Housing Authority estimates that 280,000 more individuals are now on the waiting list, with an average wait time of 4.7 years. Sadly, there is still little hope for many who have trouble making ends meet despite receiving a basic income. And of course, the overtime culture is there. JobsDB found that in Hong Kong, 89% of workers put in extra hours for little to no pay. Of those, 39% put in 4 hours, 22% commit 7, and 3% give up more than 16 hours every week. As if that weren't bad enough, a UBS poll found that Hong Kong has the most extended working hours globally, surpassing even the other major Asian financial centers. Hong Kongers put in over 20 extra hours per week at work compared to the survey's least hectic city, Paris. This mentality of work until you die has cognitive and institutional roots. And segregation. The diversity of its population is a source of great pride for Hong Kong. But the truth, however, is that natives and outsiders live in increasingly separate communities, making progress toward a more integrated society extremely difficult. Asia's world city has the fifth most significant proportion of foreign-born citizens in the world, with 600,000 overseas residents making up more than 8% of the population. Many people from various walks of life have made Hong Kong their home, including high- and low-skilled migrant laborers, international students, and professionals. Then the question becomes, why segregation? The first obstacle is communication difficulties. Despite its status as a former British colony and its aspirations to be seen as an international metropolis on par with Singapore, only 46% of Hong Kong's population can communicate in English. Indeed, by Asian standards, this rate is very high. But the ability of natives and visitors to mix depends directly on the level and number of English speakers. Socioeconomic status and way of life are two other crucial factors. Since most foreigners in Hong Kong work as executives and reside in affluent neighborhoods like mid-levels, the peak, and so on, many diverse international communities may be found primarily in these regions. Foreigners' high living standards are reflected in the area's wealth of upscale dining options, nightlife hotspots, and retail establishments. At the same time, the local populace, who typically cannot afford such amenities, is mainly kept at bay. Thousands of overseas white-collar workers visit Hong Kong yearly, but few choose to make the city their permanent home. That's it for today's video. If you enjoyed it, please do give this video a thumbs up and hit the subscribe button as well. Thanks for watching.